We were cordially invited to the Kegley Awards by the Roanoke Valley Preservation Foundation. We have the opportunity to talk with Foundation President Allison Blanton. Okay, well we're here tonight to celebrate um, not only the opening of Fire Station Number 1, which has been a huge endeavor taken on by old school partners, including Dale here. Dale Wilkinson is one of the partners. One of the partners. And um, we'll also be recognizing the renovation of Liberty Trust along with 10 other awards, um, including Ken Conklin for the Norval Lee book. But oh, this wow. is, um, yeah, Great. Are, are you you from Botetourt County? Have you seen the highway I've marker? Spent 35, I have. Okay. I've spent 35 yeah. years there, so I'm not... Quite a native, yeah. Okay, uh, well, good different. enough. Yeah. If you know about Norval Lee, then yes. that counts. So he's going to be honored tonight. Oh, isn't along, that cool? Yeah. And um, this is the um, 2022 Preservation Foundation Annual um, Meeting and Awards Reception, which we do every year. They're named after George Kegley, who was one of our founding members and, um, and head of the awards committee for years. And he passed away last January. But we actually named the awards for him back in 2019. So. He warranted that without having passed away. Yes. Anyway, um, Allison has but, done such a great job. She has for all the Roanoke Valley in in protecting these old buildings, <laughs> keep, keeping them for the next people to enjoy. And well, Allison has played such a key role in this project. It's taken five years of our life up, right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. This has it was been 2017 a, when it started. This has been an interesting ride, but taking a lot of time. <laughs> but we're here. We made it. We are. We, we are. found and the end. And it's worth doing because it now it takes this old building that had, you know, lost its original use and we've got a new use in it. And um, I think people, everybody I've heard that's come by here is, is just amazed at how great texture looks in here and what a great job y'all have done with the fire station. So how did you guys get involved with the firehouse? Were you part of the Roanoke uh, Preservation Society? <laughs> <That's all laughs> <you remember>. um, <laughs> I wear, I guess I wear two hats. So I am um, both involved with Roanoke Valley Preservation yeah, Foundation, but then also I'm an architectural historian and I work for Hill Studio and David Hill, which is an architecture yeah. firm, architecture planning he's preservation. A and he's a partner with old school partners, which includes Dale, David Hill, Greg Rhodes, and David Spiegel. Um, and so the city had this up for sale for and had time. had several proposals that just didn't really hit what they were looking for. And then old school partners came along and um, Part of what I think appealed to the city was that they were willing to put a preservation easement on it, which is very unusual. There's only a few preservation buildings with preservation easements on them in this area. And what that does is it protects this building forever. Wow. So that's the only tool out there that really could, can protect a building forever. Ask us if we'll ever so. do that again. No. <laughs> <laughs> was there must have been a lot of paperwork involved. Uh, it is. Allison had a few hours in this, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the city attorney. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Oh, anyway, they're that's always true. fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it takes it all. It goes beyond preservation to a whole legal level, but it's well worth doing. Tell us a little bit about Join us. how did Ken Coughlin's name come up for an award that he's going to be receiving. I think I saw the article in the paper about the dedication of the highway marker, mm -hmm. and um, and so that immediately piqued our interest. We keep our eye out throughout the year for things that we think you know are going to you know merit awards when we when the time comes around each fall when we get these awards. So we were and, and we work with Nelson Harris on a lot of other projects. He's received a lot of awards. So. Um, he was the one that really said, you know, Ken's the one that deserves it. And we learned more about his, the book that he'd written and just realized it was a whole lot more than just the highway marker. It's, it's the book, it's the um, renaming of the highway and just letting people, you know, it's an untold story that's remarkable and is so important to tell. So. Heritage Education Award for Norvell, an American Hero. Ken F. Conklin's biography, Norvell, An American Hero, introduces us to one of Botetourt County's most famous native sons, Norval Lee. Born near Eagle Rock, Virginia in 1924, uh, during World War II, Lee was a member of the Tuskegee Airmen. After the war, he became an Olympic boxer, winning the gold medal in 1952 in Helsinki, Finland becoming the first black Virginian to win Olympic gold. Norvell is also known for taking a stand against segregation. While traveling home by train from the 1948 Olympics, he was asked to give up his seat in the white section. Excuse me. 
and when he refused, he was arrested. Mr. Lee appealed his case, and in 1949, the Virginia Supreme Court ruled in Lee's favor in what became a landmark civil rights case, seven years before Rosa Parks. As a result of Conklin's research, a state historic road marker dedicated to the legacy of Norval Lee was unveiled in, on September 17, 2022, near Eagle Rock. According to Nelson Harris, Conklin enthusiastically supplied the needed information for the state application. Conklin's advocacy of Lee's story, along with the efforts of Delegate Terry Austin, resulted in Botetourt County getting a portion of U.S. Route 220 near Eagle Rock named in honor of Lee. Botetourt Supervisor Steve Clinton said at the marker dedication, we're about a half a century late in doing this, but today we carry on the essential process of recognizing Mr. Lee as Botetourt's most famous son. Ken Conklin brought this story to light with his book and his extensive research, and through his persistence, the county became aware of Norval Lee, a hometown hero. So, Ken, if you can come forward. Well, thank you. I'm so grateful to the Roanoke Valley uh, Preservation Foundation for recognizing this work and with, with this award. And I want to thank all of you for coming out on such a rainy, stormy evening to, to, to see it all. And it's truly a personal honor to receive an award that is named for George Kegley. He received my, he reviewed my book in February of 2021 in a Roanoke Times article. I had several phone conversations with him at the time, and now to receive an award named in his honor is very special. But that's just the way the journey Norval Lee uh, sent me on has gone. It's been filled with unexpected but exhilarating twists and turns. From meeting his descendants and people who knew him to poring over archival documents at the Botetourt County Schools, the CNO Railroad Archives in Clifton Forge, Howard University, the Library of Congress, and other sources. And then there were the book talks, the book clubs, media articles, and interviews, a highway designation, and now the historical marker as we just discussed here, and honoring Norvalee's remarkable accomplishments. And now this. I didn't, make, I didn't make this journey on my own. In lockstep with me from the beginning has been my wife, Barbara. And I don't know if Norvalee's family would have been as forthcoming as they were without her connecting with them from the beginning. This story would not have happened without the 100% support I received from Norval Lee's grandchildren, nephew, sister-in-law, and other family members. Several of them came down for the historical uh, marker unveiling. I'm grateful to my own family members for the love and support they gave me along the way, including my daughter, Dale, who came up from, uh, from Charlotte to be here tonight. There are so many people to acknowledge. First, the early readers of drafts of the manuscript were provided supportive critique. And I can't say enough about the Bodtock County Historical Society and the History Museum of Western Virginia, who supported, supported the effort in the beginning and continue to do so to this day. And the independent bookstores that carry the book off the shelf, including Roanoke's very own Book No Further. Then there's Dwayne Yancey, now executive editor of the Cardinal News. It was Dwayne, when he was at the Roanoke Times, who penned the editorial suggesting Norval Lee deserved a historical marker. And Reverend Nelson Harris, um, I know he's here, who championed the historical marker uh, approval process with uh, the Department of Historical Resources, Steve Clinton, uh, and other Botetourt County supervisors who worked with uh, uh, Delegate Terry Austin for the highway designation and historical marker. I and the Lee family are grateful for Gary LaRue, Botetourt County Administrator, and his team and the local media who made the marker unve unveiling such a success. Thank you. Thank you to the Roanoke Valley Preservation Society for their hospitality and for Ken and Barbara for bringing such a wonderful story to light.